welcome to Laser Fest. a mounted laser, a candle, and a viewing screen. I'm sending the beam of the laser directly through where the flame of the candle would be if it was lit, and it lands on this bullseye on the screen. But the question is, if I light the candle, what's going to happen? Is it going to interfere with where the beam lands? Is it going to land on the flame? Is it going to just go straight through. What's this? The dot. It appears to have not even moved even in the slightest. The candle's light doesn't affect the beam because light travels in waves and waves can go right through other waves. As an example, Notice how these water waves are easily able to pass right through one another. You know, one of the most important uses for the laser is a precision measuring tool. Take a look at this. I hooked a tiny mirror on the end of this tuning fork. Light from this mounted laser is sent to the tiny mirror and reflected to a ruler on the wall. Then when we strike the tuning fork, we now can measure the motion based on the blur on the wall. A more violent strike generates a larger blur. By rotating the fork, we can even show the motion follows the sine curve. What's so special about laser light anyways? Well. Laser light is unique for four unique reasons. A beam of sunlight sent into an aquarium reflects on a CD, breaking it up into beautiful colors. But you can't do that with a laser. You see, laser light is highly monochromatic. That means it's only one color. So if we shine a laser at the same CD, the red light will break up only into other red light. Laser light is highly collimated. That means it travels in a straight path. I've got a box here with a hole on each side and a very bright projector. Only the light that is going along the line that connects the holes gets through. This guarantees that the light that emerges is a narrow column. But this is still not a laser. Take a look at this. We've got red light, it's monochromatic, it's collimated, but it's all mixed up. It's out of phase. We say it's incoherent. Laser light, on the other hand, is in phase. It's coherent. And that's what makes laser light special. Laser light is amplified by the stimulated emission of radiation. Let me show you what I mean. There are three very common types of lasers, but they all have one design. Each one has a mirror and a semi-mirror. Semi-mirror, 
partially transparent. The first type of laser was the ruby crystal laser. So you take a ruby crystal like this one, and you zap it with a very bright light. Zap. zap. And that causes it to emit red light. The red light bounces back and forth between the mirrors, stimulating emission more and more, brighter and brighter, until it eventually emerges in a straight line from this semi-mirror. The second common type of laser is the helium neon laser, like this one right here. You take a tube of helium and neon gas and plug it into a high voltage source and you zap the gas. Zapping the gas causes it to emit red light, which bounces back and forth between these two mirrors, eventually emerging in a straight line at the semi-mirror. The third type of laser is the light-emitting diode laser. You take a diode like this one, and you put a battery on it. And as the electrons fall, they emit red light, which bounces back and forth between the mirrors, stimulating more and more emission, and eventually emerging in a straight line on this side of the cinema mirror. Thank you for joining me on Laser Fest. Red.